Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Welcome to the 2020 Nova Expo Virtual ABCs of Credit Scores webinar. My name is Jill Norcross, and I'm the Community Outreach Regional Manager for Virginia Housing. Um, we're formerly Virginia Housing Development Authority, but have rebranded as Virginia Housing last week. Our mission is to help Virginians attain quality, affordable housing. Among other things, we provide low interest home loans and grants for home time, first home, first time home buyers. I'm very excited to have you join us today. Um, we would like to be our, our webinar to be really a conversation between you and our wonderful speaker. So I am going to encourage you to use the chat box. Um, you can click on the question mark that's on a circle on the right side of your screen and type in your questions as we go. And we're gonna, I'm gonna interrupt our speaker, Larry, and um, try to answer your questions right away. So we'll be monitoring that um, and feel free to ask away. I think Larry's gonna have a lot of great information for you. Um, I also want to remind you that if you know somebody who wasn't able to join us live, um, we are going to air this again on Facebook at 2 p.m. So you can encourage people to look there. And you can also go to www.novahousingexpo.org to find the rest of our schedule of web, uh, events and um, as well as visit our virtual exhibit hall that's full of people who can help you on your quest and you also can get an opportunity to get free private financial counseling there so let's just kick off by introducing our speaker joining us today is the vision visionary mr larry laws mr laws joined the united states army in september 1980 at age 18 and he knew his life would be committed to service while on active duty he completed his undergraduate degree in business and an MBA, started a family business, and established a nonprofit organization. He served our country for 24 years and retired as a master sergeant in 2004. Now, out of uniform, he serves his community. Larry loves helping people just like you build credit and improve their financial capabilities. He is the founder of First Home Alliance, a HUD approved nonprofit housing counseling agency that helps people become successful homeowners. He believes that there's just one thing that stands distance between you and your financial goals, a simple plan. As he presents some material today, you will notice that he will take complex things and make them simple. Today, he'll be sharing easy tips to help you build and maintain good credit. So, um, and these will help you along your way to achieve your financial goals. Let us welcome Larry Laws. It is great to have you here with us today and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jill, for that introduction. Uh, again, you mentioned my name is Larry and I would like to go ahead and get started on our uh, presentation today on the ABCs of credit. And um, the First Home Alliance was established in uh, uh, 2002 while I was still on active duty service and from there uh, I retired in 2004 and began uh, 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 operating on a daily basis. Now I'm trying to advance the slides as well. There we go. And uh, First Home Alliance is uh, it's a, a community organization, but I don't, I can't do everything alone. Of course, I have a staff and volunteers, a magnificent board, and a, a whole team to provide these services uh, to our community. Uh, the uh, uh, hardship in 2008 gave us the opportunity to serve a multi thousands of families no. in foreclosure and the uh, COVID-19 basically caused us to go in a direction of like a different, different direction but a great direction is providing these services virtually so everything that we did in person now we're able to provide it uh, virtually and so uh, this is uh, our staff here some of the new things that we are off we offer now with First Home Alliance with the credit improvement of course uh, home buying foreclosure prevention we also offer financial recovery and also and the additional service is reverse mortgage counseling 
Uh, these are the, the accomplishments of uh, 2019. You'll see that we did quite a bit. We served over 934 households, and uh, and actually we helped individuals reach their financial goals. Uh, so uh, home ownership is not for everyone. Um, buying a new car is not for everyone. But I would say for reaching goals and financial goals, everyone has goals. And basically to reach those goals, you need to set have a plan. And so uh, credit is a, definitely a, 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 one of those tools that you need to actually help you attain those financial goals. And so having a plan to build credit, establish credit, improve credit, and, and also maintain it, it set a goal. And so that's a, a list of some of the services that we offer. Of course, you can find out more about the services we offer on our website and also the exhibit hall at the uh, Nova Expo that has been mentioned. And at the end, uh, during this um, webinar, it will be mentioned again. Uh, again, we would like to give in-person classes. I've enjoyed giving the uh, ABCs a credit, getting feedback from the, from the audience. And I want to continue that. The last few years that we've been doing this, we usually have a packed room. We have hands going up and I never hardly ever make it through the slides. And so I don't mind not getting to the end of these slides I have today, but I would like to be able to, the audience to be engaged ask questions and allow me the opportunity to answer those questions. ABC is the credit. Let's get started. Um, these are uh, the topics that we, we have scheduled for today. Basically, I broke it down into five areas. Uh, we're going to speak in reference to the credit uh, reporting agencies briefly. We're going to briefly cover understanding a credit report. And of course, encourage everyone to um, uh, pull that report multiple times throughout the year now. And I'll go ahead and say it up front, just in case if I forget, the annualcreditreport.com. This is the free report. You actually can pull it from all three bureaus three times. I'm sorry, you can pull it from all three bureaus weekly. And so until the end of the year, to this year, they have allowed us to pull our credit weekly from all three uh, reporting agencies. So I highly encourage you to start doing that. Um, we're gonna spend uh, quite a bit of time and I hope that we have questions on credit scoring. And the next area is basically improving your credit. So I want to make sure that we answer questions there and you get a lot out of that. That's what I wanna take with you. And then if we have time, I'll speak in reference to safeguarding your personal information. Um, and I will get these slides rolling here soon. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, again, uh, she mentioned earlier that I've uh, spent some time in the military. And uh, I came from a pretty large family and we had chores and things for me was all, uh, I took complex things. Sometimes it's too complex because if the question or whatever the situation go too long, I may get lost. And so what I need to take that is to digest it and bring it down to something very simple. And so if you think about first response, uh, basically uh, ABCs of, uh, of, uh, of helping someone, uh, life-saving steps, uh, CPR, you basically ABC, clear the airway, stop the bleeding, ch check for circulation and sh shock, just very simple A, B, and C, because if we don't have air, you're going to die. That's the quickest uh, way to terminate or expire. And the next is you can actually bleed to death. So A, B, and C. When it comes to credit, I wanted to make it as simple as possible and it is simple in reference to um, credit. Um, Larry, can I interrupt you one second? We have our first question um, and somebody was wondering if they are soft pulls the credit. That is, yes, yes. Uh, thanks for that question. There's considered hard pulls and then there are soft pulls. Soft pulls are mostly pulled by organizations that have an account for education and counseling. And so when the credit is pulled, you get the same report, detailed report, try merge, but there's no impact on the score from that inquiry. However, a hard pull would be someone that's going to extend credit to you, such as a car dealer, a mortgage, or something like that sort. They're going to extend a line of credit to you. Then, yes, when they pull your credit, that inquiry is a hard pull, and it impacts the score. So thank you for that, that question. Uh, one may ask, what is a good credit score? And so um, the, the worst thing possible is to have no score at all. And so if you do not use credit, you do not have an account or you had an account, you no longer use the account, 
it cancels. Uh, I recall a few years ago, uh, working with a group of individuals that was in a housing area that basically was on fixed income. And uh, many of them hadn't used their credit in 10, 15 years. And so we was there, they was going through revitalization and want us to do the credit counseling. We pull half of the individuals in that, in that particular class did not have a credit score at all. So yes, you can have credit today and not use it and your score no longer appear when, when your report is pulled. So you have to use it if you have to use credit to actually get the benefit of having a good credit score. So a good credit score basically will tell you, uh, a lot of people give you different answers, what it takes to qualify for a loan. If you wanna be good, then I would say, why not be excellent? And so uh, the industry definition of good credit score is actually 720. 720 is a good credit score. And I like to, uh, if you wanna set a goal in credit, try to enter that 700 club. And so you're in that 700 club and then over 720, you have a you basically an excellent score. So shoot for 720 if you have a goal to shooting for a particular score. Again, we're talking about a score, giving your score, don't get caught up on a whole lot of the score when it start talking about credit. Credit in reference to establishing credit, um, re, uh, recovering from credit, uh, uh, maintaining credit, building credit, storing credit, it all comes very simple if you do these three things. And it's A, B, and C. Yes. Okay, back to the score, Larry. Somebody had a question about how bad is a Chapter 7 bankruptcy in affecting the credit score to be able to get a mortgage loan? And how bad? Now, I won't go into the uh, the uh, the uh, the qualifications of a loan. I won't, that's a, a a topic that is uh, that is better answered by a loan officer, and we're not we're not speaking of uh, qualifying for a loan per se today. However, bankruptcy uh, is one of those things that show up on a credit once you have a, a bankruptcy. Chapter seven will actually stay stay on your credit uh, report for ten years. Now, you may ask, how do it impact your score? The bankruptcy itself is just basically language, just language on your credit. And there is a spot on the credit in reference to the public information that will show that you filed bankruptcy. In reference to the score, by the time you get to the bankruptcy, the score has taken all the damage and impact that it's going to take. And so what, uh, what affects your score is the late payments or no payments. Those are things that delay, that cuts your score, the 30-day lates, the 60-day lates, the roll in 30 days, the 90-day lates. That's what's impacting the score and driving the score down. By the time you make it to bankruptcy, and actually file the bankruptcy with bankruptcy is not enough. It's a protection, meaning that they no longer will come after you for those particular um, accounts that are covered under bankruptcy. Actually, the damage to the score actually stops because there is no impact on negative scoring, a negative impact, and usually the score will will at that time rebuild, re will continue to uh, will begin to recover if you open up lines of credit. So again, that is a very good question in reference to bankruptcy. Again, the ABCs, always pay the bills on time. Most people say that's so simple. Yes, it is simple to do, pay your bills on time. And remember that if you're trying to build credit, pay your bills on time. If you're trying to reestablish credit, pay your bills on time. If you pay it on time, then it's gonna be reported that you're paying on time and paying as agreed, and it positively impacts your score. B is balance your credit usage. We're going to talk about utilization, the utilization, the amount of uh, debt that you have or uh, the amount of the available credit that you use, but also the types of credit. So balance that credit usage. And then C is check your credit annually. annually. And you're not just checking it. You're checking it. You're correcting it. Uh, any inaccuracies, you're correcting information. You're doing inquiries on things that are questionable about your credit. You're making it as accurate as possible. If you was in school, you wouldn't wait till the end of semester when it's time for, or time to get your diploma before checking to see what your grades are. And so the credit is not so much looking at the score, but looking at the impacts and the things and the difference of your score. And so you should be checking that credit report file, such as if it was a follow up to your report card, check your uh, credit on this one, basically annually, but during these times, I would definitely recommend you take full advantage in checking it weekly during this uh, 
the time period that we have to do that. Okay, uh, the uh, credit reporting agencies, some may call them bureaus and things like that. There's three agencies. And a question may, may be asked, why do we have three? Well, actually you wouldn't want uh, just one agency's agency pulling your credit and giving you a, a, a feedback on the credit. You want multiple sources so that it'll make it um, uh, more credible and also give you options. And uh, it would be fair if that you evaluate it with more than one industry. And so these um, credit reporting agencies is Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. At one time, uh, credit was reported to these different agencies based on basically the uh, the area of the country where the, the uh, credit reporting agencies was located. They would report to a certain agency. Now with the, the virtual world that we live in, these agencies can be based in California, whatever you're in, uh, and it wouldn't matter exactly where your creditor is located or you're located to what bureau or what agency that your credit report is reported to. And yes, each of them may uh, may provide you a different score. Question may ask, why do, why do not use the same uh, model? Why is the scores are different? Well, if they all did the same, then you wouldn't need three. And so yes, they each evaluate your scores differently. They use different criteria. They do use different computer modules to gather that score. So you do get different scores from the, the agencies. This is a copy of a credit report. And I would like for you to um, get to know your credit report. I mean, up front and close and personal with your credit report. Um, be consistent in reference when you're filling out a credit application. If you normally put your middle initial, then continue to put middle initial. If you use your full middle name, then use your middle name. If you use a junior or senior, then I would say make it your legal name uh, if you want to consistently use it. When I'm, and when I'm saying use it, when you're filling out an application Fill in a, a, a loan application, you want to be consistent with that. Uh, yes. Mary, um, can you let us know which scores are used by lenders? Which scores are used by lenders? That is a great question. The scores that are used by lenders is the FICO score. Okay. And so you have a Vantage score and you also have FICO. Now recall uh, uh, FICO do have different models. And so your mortgage lender is going to use the latest uh, FICO version and model. And so uh, if you're paying attention to your scores, Vantage scores are nice, they look good, but you want to make, pay attention to the FICO score. And the lender also, to answer that question, when they're looking at your scores, you're going to get three scores. And when it comes to setting the score that's going to um, decide the rate that you're going to get on your mortgage or your loan, it's going to be the middle score. And so it's not average, it's the one that's in the middle. So they take all three scores and they pick the one that's in the middle. So if you have two that are the same, that are low, then it's gonna be that low score, okay? And so always the middle score and uh, it will be the FICO score. Okay, we are uh, still speaking on this credit report. And we're going to break it down just a little bit. The credit report, there's five areas of the credit report. We mentioned about the personal information. So this is the personal information session. Just give you a brief on what it may look like on your credit report. These things, uh, it is, they, they come out with very nice colors and graphics. I, I think, it, um, you know, when you do it online, it really uh, make it easy to read. One important thing I'll point out on here, if you know to have the personal information down at the bottom, usually that first page, it will actually give you the key. It's basically the key, the answer to increase your score or to improve your score. And usually the uh, credit um, agencies will list anywhere from three to five of these quotes at the bottom. This one shows a minimum of four. And so uh, you will look at the bottom of that credit score, you see the score, and then it will list the things that, that you have improved upon and it would improve your score. This one, it says total of all balances on bank cards or revolving accounts is too high. And so when you say, how can I imp improve my score, improve my credit? Where? It tells you right there. 
lower the balances on your revolving accounts. And so we're going to talk more about uh, the revolving account and credit utilization. But in this score, this example here, it is the main reason this score is not as high as it could be is because of that. And so, mind you, 723 is a pretty good score. Another area is where they have the collection accounts. Some are more graphic than others. It is uh, uh, what I would really um, uh, ask you to read through the information in there and make sure that it matches your actual account that you have. Ensure that the account numbers are accurate. Mainly, the accounts may change from creditor to creditor. Uh, look at the most time the last four digits of the account number is what is really important. However, as it transfer to different uh, agencies, you do want to go back and ensure that the account numbers are the account that you are paying on and the account that's being reported. And these questions on here in reference to when you establish the account, the balance of the account, is very important if you're trying to um, uh, register for your free credit report. The annual credit report, if you get the questions wrong on a particular account, you would not uh, have access to get your free credit uh, report. So again, it's very important to know what's on your credit report. This is an example of the public information, the inquiries, and also the creditor information. If you need to contact your creditor, that information for each of the credit accounts, you have a creditor information on the bottom of the report that give you the information to contact that creditor. Inquiries, I know I'm going backwards here. Inquiries, there, um, there are annual, there's uh, promotional inquiries. Uh, when you uh, request a, um, so someone to extend loan, a, a credit line to you, Basically, your SIN is okay for them to periodically uh, to give annual reviews. Uh, so when they do a review, it'll show as an inquiry. Also, these sources share the information with their partners that also can uh, reach out and get not, they don't look at your total report, but make an inquiry in your report to send you promotional uh, information. So you can have an inquiry for a promotional reason, and that was was uh, shared with a uh, uh, a partner of the creditor that extended that line of credit to you. Again, the bank uh, public information. This is very important for for lenders, of course, but even for for uh, a, t a tenant, a landlord. This is information if you uh, have had a lien against you, or if you've been evicted, or something of that sort. That information can deter a landlord from actually um, a grin with your lease application because of this information on your credit report. This information is very important. It needs to be accurate. If it's accurate and true, more than likely, it's going to stay on your report. You can request for some different information to be removed. However, you do want it to be accurate and correct. We'll move now into credit scoring, unless there was a question more on the, uh, the uh, credit report itself. Credit scoring. The question's already been asked about the different uh, scoring and scoring modules. And I will just mention the, the major models that, that is used today is the Advantage and also FICO. The Advantage is actually a newer model. Uh, this model, um, it uh, is a calculation is, uh, that is used by the computer system that gathers a certain um, a number of individuals within a certain um, uh, population and rate their activity, and it generates a score. This it, um, often seen that the Vantage score model actually scores a little higher than the FICO score model. We may move to that at a certain point in time and use more of the Vantage at a point in time. But right now, if you're speaking of mortgages, mortgage loan officers, mortgage companies or lenders are going to look at the FICO model. The FICO model has been around for a long period of time. Uh, FICO actually came from um, uh, from uh, Fair Isaac, and uh, it's not just because it's fair, it's actually a mathematician uh, and an engineer, basically, that designed this model uh, that would um, rate credit and give it a score. And so therefore, it became the FICO model, and it's a model that we've been using for a long period of time. And that is the, mo that is the score that will be used for your mortgage, uh, your mortgage loan. The credit scoring. Credit scoring, credit scoring, this is um, how do you get that score? 
how do you get that score? There's a lot of things that make up the basis of the score. And um, we'll look at this uh, graphic here and, and speak on these different areas. Payment history. Payment history, basically, it makes up 35% of your score. The payment history, basically, every time that you pay your payment, it is reported. The longer that you have that account, it shows the accuracy of your payment on time. And so when I use the, the, um, the key A and basically saying always pay bills on time, the reason behind that and why it's so important is because that consistency of pandan on time is driving your score in a positive direction and impacts it 35% of the score. So yes, paying your bills on time is the most important in reference to establishing credit, restoring credit, and maintaining that credit. Pay the bills on time. Credit history is 35% of your score. I have a question for you, Larry. I just yeah. came in. Um, no when you're pulling your own score, how can you determine if you're getting a Vantage score or a FICO score? Okay. It would. It should actually tell you when you pull your score if it's a Vantage or FICO. Um, the uh, I, I don't have the list of the uh, bureau, of the uh, agencies next to me, but normally they will uh, tell specifically tell you this is a we used a Vantage model. Okay, and a lot, the, the, usually the higher score is the Vantage score as well. But uh, if you have a question on that, just basically look a little bit more uh, uh, closer at your report and uh, see, uh, you'll see what the Vantage score is. Thanks. No problem. The amount owed. And so the amount owed basically is the amount uh, based on your availability versus the amount that you're using. And so, uh, for instance, um, uh, if you have availability of $10,000, and so if you only use 50 uh, or $5,000, then that's 50% utilization. And so that is not necessarily a, a bad location to be using 50% availability, but you also want to use that. And I'll cover that into the um, uh, in improving your score is drop, pay that debt down basically and use a smaller amount of your availability, which will drive up your score. So pan those debts down, the amount that is owed, that impacts your score 30%. The next area is the length of credit history. The length of the credit history, basically, we even though we're talking about length and longevity of account, but opening and closing accounts affects your credit score. Opening most recent accounts, anytime you're extended um, a new account or extended a credit, your credit actually takes a hit because anytime you open up a new account, you become more of a risk. Some accounts that you actually, uh, it could be a, a term where you get the full amount of the money up front, or it could be revolving where you can pull a certain amount of the money over a period of time. However, it opens up because there's a risk that you may max it out or you may um, uh, you know, pull an account, close an account. It shows a little risk because it may be a little bit of instability in your financial um, uh, situation. And so again, opening and closing account, length of uh, credit history impacts the score 15%. And then that leads us into the, new, the next area is new credit. And I remind you, not to open up new credit unless it's necessary. Do not just open up credit just to open it up. Going into the stores, the store credit cards, just to get 10%. A lot of times that 10% is you're paid 50% uh, more because of opening that account up and then looking at the interest that you may pay on the account. So it's a lot more. You're not, in most cases, in most cases, you're not saving the 10% that you think that you're saving. And then the next area in credit scoring is the types of credit. The types of credit, basically, we look at revolving credit, and we look at um, um, we, we look at fixed uh, credit interests, and then also real estate. Real estate, uh, from there's very few accounts where you may see someone with a credit score that's over 800. Very few accounts, the individual that have um, a credit score over 800 that do not have real estate uh, as one of the types of credit. So again, 
you do want to have a good mix of credit. There's no questions. We'll go to our next area. It's an improving the credit score. And improving the credit score is, again, it's not something that you just take a, a, a class to improve the score or you do one thing to improve the credit score. It's on a, um, on a daily basis, your activity, your credit score is impacted by your credit itself, your credit usage. The, the score basically reflects your behavior. If you have good behavior, and makes uh, not opening up accounts unless it's necessary, using a good credit balance in reference to the types of credit, balancing the utilization of the credit, paying your bills on time. If you do these things, this is gonna uh, improve your credit score. Uh, I'm gonna highlight just a couple of these, but I will mention them all. One is keep the credit balances no more than 30%. So I was talking about the availability, the available credit, and the amount that you use on the available credit. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more on the um, utilization ratio. Uh, pay down balances on the credit cards. And so minimal payments are, they're great for the credit card companies, but they're not good for you. Remember the, that's a revolving account and the credit, the interest is added on the unpaid balance. And so by only paying a minimal amount, there's a lot going, the, the majority of that is going to interest and a small amount is going to the principal. So increase your payments a lot more than uh, 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 the minimum payment. Set a plan as to when you're gonna pay this credit card off and not just have it uh, open forever. And so if you use a credit card, will it be 60 days? Will it be 90 days? Is it six months? When will I pay this credit card off? So set yourself a plan and pay the card off. And then of course you still, still need to use it periodically so that it will um, uh, increase your credit, but not have a long standing credit card that is never paid off. Don't apply for I have for a question credit. for you, Larry. Yes. This, is, this is a kind of multi-part question, but it did have to do with the credit cards that you just discussed. Um, the first part is how can we check my credit report for free instead of waiting for a year? Um, do lenders looking for all three credit bureau um, reports? And if I have a credit card not paid and shown in the three bureaus still, but it has been seven years, do I have to pay it or let it fall off on its own? And then the final part, and I'll go back and revisit these, for how long can unpaid credit card debt stay in the credit report. Okay. Let me right. tell me if you need me to repeat no, any of those. No, no problem. And so um, I will um, the, the the free credit report, and I will mm -hmm. I have a slide to have you the free annual credit report dot com, mm -hmm. and I will go in a little bit more detail in reference to how to apply for that, and you can apply now weekly. Uh, which credit reports are do the lenders look at all three? That is true. They look they pull all three. There are some cases where if you have not used credit or do not have much uh, credit, credit lines, it may not have been reported to all bureaus. So not all your creditors report to all, all the reporting agencies, I should say. Uh, they're not all reported to all credit agencies. So if you only use your credit minimal, you only have one or two accounts, it's a possibility you may only have two scores. And then one of the uh, reporting agencies do not have a score. However, when we say try merge, that is a tr all three uh, reported agencies will be pulled for mortgages. Uh, you mentioned about the seven year time period. There's a seven year time period for creditor information to stay on your credit. The only time it go outside of the seven years is to chapter seven bankruptcy that would stay up to 10 years. And in some cases you may see foreclosure out there, but mostly it's this chapter seven for, um, bankruptcy that would stay on there for 10 years. Everything else falls off at seven years. Now, when you ask me, <laughs> uh, should you uh, let it stay on your credit or, or should you pay it or just let it fall off? Now, it, it, honestly, even if you get a bankruptcy and uh, the creditor can no longer uh, come after you for the debt, it don't mean that you don't owe it and you never borrowed it. It don't mean that. And so even they may be even a charge off. 
this is where the accreditor basically said, we can't contact you. It's not worth uh, chasing you any longer. So we're just going to charge it off. Basically, that's for accounting reason and tax reporting purposes. And they no longer come after, it may no longer come after you. It may sell that account to uh, uh, some other debt collectors or someone to come after you for that. And so it will stay at the end of seven years. It is, if it's not settled, it will fall off the credit report. And so that will happen and it no longer shows on a credit report. And so I think I answered the question as to should you pay it or not. That's um, what I would say if you're applying for a mortgage, if you're applying for a mortgage, I would uh, ask you to communicate with your loan officer, your mortgage loan officer, and they can give you a good uh, answer as to if something on that credit report needs to be uh, addressed or not. And if, uh, and also when it should be addressed. Should it be addressed now? Should it be addressed at the closing table? Will it affect you qualifying for a loan, for a mortgage loan? And so, yes, there's an effect of every, every account on your credit report. However, what happened within the last 12 months impacts your score more than what happened five or six years ago. And so the most recent information on your credit report impacts the score more than what happened three, four, five years ago. Okay. And Thank I, you. And I'll just remind everybody, if you do have questions to put it in the, in the question box, that's how we're uh, asking the questions today and we'll make sure we get to it. So thank you. Okay. Another one here I would uh, touch on is never co-sign. If you co-sign, basically you're taking the, uh, uh, the responsibility saying that it's your financial obligation to take on that debt. If that person pay or not pay, it's your responsibility to take on the debt when they do not pay. So do not uh, co-sign uh, for individuals. I will move over to the uh, credit utilization so that you can just get a, uh, a visual of that and uh, show that it shows the 30% of your um, uh, overall credit score. The credit utilization, I will give you an example in reference uh, that how that utilization one impacts your score if it's uh, over 50%. If you can move that down to less than 30% of your utilization, it basically show that you are um, that you you know how to use credit. You can be trusted with credit, and it also so you're using your credit very wisely. Whereas if you're at 70, 80, 90%, you're not using it wisely. One of the example I will show in there in reference to closing an account, whereas you may be using, if you're, um, your max available credit is $10,000 and you're using uh, uh, 5,000, that's 50% utilization. However, there may be a, a combination of cards that you're using that, that give you that total amount of 10,000. If you close those cards, for instance, if you close $5,000 worth of cards, whether it's two or three cards you're not using, and you now your debt level is still $5,000, you still owe $5,000 on the two cards that you have left, your utilization just went from 50 up to 100. And so by closing those three other cards that made up the, third, the other $5,000 that you were not using, cause your utilization to go up to 100, and that will also impact your score negatively. And your, your score will decrease by closing those accounts. And so do not close those accounts. Periodically use the accounts, pay the bills on time, have a plan to pay the accounts off, but leave those cards open. Um, and again, if it's a mortgage situation, talk to your mortgage loan officer in reference to whether or not you're going to close accounts, pay them off, and things of that sort before making that decision, talk to your loan officer. So Larry, can you cover again how often you sh a credit report should be reviewed? At a minimal, at a minimal annually, a minimal annually. And so once we go back, when we are uh, past the pandemic and we are back to the uh, being able to pull your credit report annually, then what I would suggest is that you spread it out throughout the year. You have three bureaus, pull one bureau at a time. This is once we have the release from the uh, COVID-19. And so you pull one bureau in January, you wait four months, pull the second bureau, and then four months after that, you pull your third 
uh, reporting agency. So TransUnion say in January, and in April you pull Experian, and then you wait to August or so, then you pull your Equifax. And so spread it out throughout the year, and it give you opportunity to see the changes on your credit report, uh, make inquiries on your credit report, and keep constant uh, observation of the utilization. So again, uh, each uh, credit report agency pull it once a year and spread the uh, the pulls out. This is a, a, a tool by Experian. It's where this is improving your score. A lot of things that do not show on your score, such as utility bills and cell phone payments and things of that sort, do not show. So in, to improve your score, you want to go to those non-traditional lines uh, that are not reported on your credit rep uh, report. Get the usage of that reported on your credit report to increase your score. Um, Equifax, I mean Experian, have uh, the Experian Boost, where you can get an instant boost on your credit. Uh, what You go into Experian and make Experian Boost, they ask you a few questions to ensure that it's you, ensure that you have a report on Experian, and then it'll ask you to register. And you would link your bank account to the Experian account. And uh, the Experian, with this um, uh, secure link, will basically look into your bank account and see if you have Comcast or Cox or whatever uh, internet uh, provider there and actually get and rate that your your payment uh, history with uh, that that provider. It'll do the same thing with your telephone company, the electric company, and the water. And so these utility companies, they will be able to grab that information from your bank through a secure link and give you a rating or a boost in, on your experience. And so that boost for each individual, it could be different. It depends on the, the it depends on a lot of those things. When you open the account, how long the account has been open, uh, pan your account on time. The average on an individual that do this for the first time have seen a, an increase of 12 points. That's just an average, but a lot have get a lot more impact on their score, especially for individuals that do not have credit and have not used uh, any of your traditional lines of credit. So these non-traditional lines of credit with this boost can impact your score. So I highly recommend using this tool to impact your credit score. The last area that we're going to cover is safeguarding personal information. And th there's a lot of different ways to safeguarding. You have confidential information, you have your private information, you have medical information, a lot of sensitive information that you want to uh, ensure that you keep uh, 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 safeguard for that. Uh, be alert of impersonators. Impersonators, whether it's on the telephone, of course, internet, emails, but also if you're looking at your uh, credit reports, you want to see if there's um, uh, the inquiries where individuals may be pulling your credit uh, attempting to pull your credit because there's an inquiry there where there's actually something that has been misspelled. And so you want to do the research on that, find out where the um, credit app was actually um, uh, submitted and follow up and get that taken care of. And there's many different ways that you can uh, 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 resolve that in a reference to police report and filing a scam report. So there's a lot of different reports and we can help you with that if that someone has impersonated uh, trying to pull your credit. Safely dispose of uh, personal information. One of the uh, gifts that I like to give for first time home buyers is a shredder. And so do not take a credit application or a credit card bill or any inquiry that you get in the mail and put it into your recycle bin. That is the easiest way for people to gather enough information to actually um, uh, uh, give them an avenue for identity theft. Encrypt your data. There's very many, you can go to the extent of basically installing a VSN on your computer system to ensure that your data links are encrypted. Do not write down your passwords uh, and also pass your, uh, change your passwords um, uh, often. And the last one I would use is be wise on Wi-Fi. There's been a few incidents on organizations basically uh, having um, 
meetings or conferences at hotels where you go in on a Wi-Fi, maybe someone there to have a list of everybody that's there at that conference, or a person on Wi-Fi can enter into someone's um, uh, information that is on an unsecure link and gather information from an individual that have a list of uh, individuals. And so uh, be very careful and wise when you're on Wi-Fi, not only at hotels, but Starbucks and not uh, any coffee shop, any place where they have fee Wi-Fi, those are open networks and individuals can and uh, can come in and get their information from your computer. So be, be uh, cautious of that and, uh, and uh, be aware. All right. And so Wait. now, I'm, yes. I have a couple questions for you. I wanted to just, uh, one is, and I think you might have answered this after it came in, but just um, if you could just revisit how much using your utility um, payment history can improve the FICO score. And then also, if you could go back over the line of credit um, information you talked about. Okay. And so I'm not totally uh, line of credit, line of credit. I'm going to have to uh, have to give me a little bit more information on line of credit. Okay. Yeah. If you could um, put that in the question box, more detail about that question, that would be great. But also going over um, if you're the Experian boost information, how much that improves your credit score. Yes. Okay. And so for each individual, it would be different. And so on average, it's about 12 points. If you haven't had this boost before where you have not had these traditional lines of credit counted on your credit report, the, the internet, phone, electric and water, those are things that have never been uh, rated on your credit report. And so for individual that have no credit, and now that you do have credit, then you would, it would probably impact your score more just by having those things reported. So you may see, uh, you know, a 50 point uh, difference in your credit. I'm just giving a number, a 50 point, a large uh, percent, just by adding those new accounts in there that is reported good history. Now, of course, it's reporting negative history that's gonna impact it negatively. However, a person that uh, that uses their credit, they have multiple lines of credit. They may have 20 or 30 different creditors, and they just add additional four uh, uh, utilities or so onto a credit account. Then their score may be impacted less, and so it may only impact their score 10 or uh, 15 different points. And so each individual will impact a little bit different. But in most cases, it is a positive impact if you have uh, been consistent on paying those utilities on time. The, the line of Great. credit. Okay. Yeah, they're just asking for a definition of what is a line of credit and if you should get one. So. Yes, good question. Uh, a line of credit is uh, basically a, a revolving account like a credit card. And so a uh, line of credit basically have uh, uh, a, a, a limit. And so a, li uh, a line of credit is a credit card that could be a limit of uh, $1,000. You could actually get a, a, a maintenance line of credit for a home form of credit union maybe that would extend it up to $5,000. You may even use what you call the home equity um, of the, the, uh, the HELOC the home equity line of credit on a mortgage where it could be up to a percentage of a amount that you have available from what you owe to uh, the uh, the value of your home. And so it, a line of credit could be uh, quite a bit. It could be twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Now on that line of credit, you're not, you may pay an application fee to open up the line of credit if it's for on a mortgage or something of that sort. Um, for a credit card, there may not be an application fee. And there is no other fees uh, associated with that line of credit until you actually use a portion of that line of credit. So it's access credit to you. Then once you use that credit, then it operates just like any other revolving account. Interest is added to your unpaid balance. You pay the balance off, no charges. You maintain a balance, you get a monthly charge until that is paid off. That's the basic line of credit. Great, thank you. Um, our next question goes back to security and where is the best place to safely secure credit card information online? Best place to secure it online. I don't, uh, 
uh, not going to uh, definitely say uh, that there's actually a secure place to secure it online. Uh, there are some safeguards, you know, uh, with having a personal uh, 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 network, uh, VSN. There's also uh, different uh, organizations, uh, government sources that have uh, servers that if your information is in there, it's more secure than when it, if it's non-secure. And so when you're uh, into a computer environment, you want to look and see if it have a security on, on the link with the S, uh, HTTPS, then it's secure. When it's not HTTP, then it's non-secure. So I can't tell you what's the most secure, but I can tell you what's not secure in reference to HTTP and basically all open networks with no type of uh, safeguards, uh, virus protections, alert protections that um, are not secure when they do not have those things. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next question is, if I closed a CD before it matured, will that affect my credit? If I close a CD mm -hmm. before it matured, will that affect my credit? No. Uh, a CD is, uh, is, not a line, is not a line of credit. And so um, uh, a, a CD is a, uh, a deposit, a, a secure uh, deposit that you're gaining interest on, and they project it over a period of time and, and they lock in an interest rate. And so the penalty normally that you will observe if you uh, cash the CDN prior to maturity is that you would um, you would not gain the uh, interest, a portion of that interest. However, CDs are fairly secure that you will always get the amount that you put into the CA in most, most, most cases. It is secure. You will get the amount that you put in, but you can be penalized on some of the interest you would have gained if you waited to the uh, maturity date. Great. Thank you. No um, any other questions for Larry? Please take this opportunity to go ahead and put them in the question box, and we'll make sure that we get them um, answered. So I don't know, Larry, if you want to move on, did you have other slides to cover at this point? Yes. Well, I was going to reiterate A, B, and C, of course, always Great. pay bills on times. B is the balanced credit usage. And then C, we're going to move to the credit, uh, check your credit annually. And so that question was asked earlier and that there is free credits and things of that sort. The one that is, um, there was a federal uh, act that was uh, 2003 is the, uh, the Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Act that was passed in 2003. It was to enhance consumer protection. And at that time, the federal government would gate, because everyone else could look at your credit other than the individual up until that point. And so now uh, it allowed you, and this is a federal act, so it's not uh, by FICO, it's not by Experian, it's not by uh, lender, it's the federal government saying the agencies will allow you access to your credit report at no charge, at no charge. However, it is not a score. So you're not getting the score. You don't necessarily need to watch your score. It's, uh, there are some tools and some monitoring uh, devices out there if you want to actually look at your score go up and down. What's important is the data, the report data that is being reported onto your report every month. Whenever there's a, a payment made or a payment missed or an inquiry, uh, an inquiry with someone monitoring your uh, account or someone requesting information from your account or someone requesting a lot of uh, a credit uh, line on your account or if there's liens on your account, that is the information that is very important that you need to monitor constantly. Because of the pandemic that we're experiencing now, uh, some of the creditors, so the mortgages, uh, or, uh, mortgage and some other creditors, they have been um, recommended by the federal government not to put late payments on your account. So if you miss, if you have a forbearance and you have a late seven, uh, seven years ago, you would be in a forbearance. They're protecting you from foreclosure. However, they was reporting late payments or reporting no payment onto your credit report, driving your credit score down. And so those things should, we should be protected now and your credit score should not be 
uh, drawing down because you're missing payments. I would recommend that you call all your creditors. If you cannot make the payments, if you can make the payments, make the payments. Don't save the money <laughs> when it comes to your mortgage and your creditors. Make the payments. But if you're not able to make the payments because unemployment and things of that sort, then request a forbearance. And so by requesting forbearance, there should not be no lates reported, but they're putting due diligence on you to actually monitor your own credit. And so this is free, do not cost you any money. You can actually uh, monitor your own credit on a weekly basis. And so all three, you go to annualcreditreport.com, select the credit reporting agency that you would like to pull first and pull it. If you want to do it, you can do them all three nets weekly, or if you want to pull one report one day, wait two days and pull the next one the next day and pull the next one and just make it a portion of your homework on a weekly basis now to pull your reports look at your personal data look at the public information ensure the information is correct up uh, uh update your employer information in there any information that's incorrect put into an inquiry to correct it if there's a report on your rep uh, credit report that should not be there most of the inquiries you can do online other ways that you can actually mail in letters to the reporting agencies and a creditor to have things removed, but you can actually put the inquiries online. Again, that's annualcreditreport.com. If you answer all the questions correctly when you go into account, you would be able to pull it online. If you do not answer the question, they may tell you that you have to mail in, and you can click and also mail in an application. Once you get that application in the mail, you would be able to look at the creditor information that they ask you and the next time you go online you'll be able to answer the questions correctly on those credit accounts and then you continuously pull it online from there and if you have if you want to order by phone the phone number is 877-322-8228 and again highly encourage you to begin pulling your credit during the pandemic pull it weekly any Wonderful. questions yeah. yeah, a couple more questions. We have about five more minutes together. Okay. So go ahead, last last call to put questions in the question box. But um, in the meantime, a couple more have come in. So if I close my unsecured credit card, would it affect my credit? If you pull your, uns yes, it would. Um, and uh, that unsecured credit card has a, a available credit. And the example that I used before, and I used a round number of $10,000 available credit. And you may be using a portion of that. You may be using 30%, 40%, or 50% of what the case may be that you're using now. But if you, uh, if you decrease your availability and you close a card, a card is 25, say it's $2,500 limit on that one particular card, it affects the total amount of your availability. And so if you had $2,500 card that you close, now your availability is 7,500. If you was using $5,000 of the 10,000 uh, total availability, that's 50%. Even if you didn't take out any credit, you didn't ex uh, ask for any additional credit at all, but the balance is still $5,000. If your availability drops down to 7,500, now you're using a lar larger amount. It went from 50% up to 75% of availability, of usage. And by using that higher amount, 75% of your available credit will cause your score to go down. Okay, so closing, whether it's secure or non-secure, closing an account will affect your credit score. And it's the same, a similar effect when opening an account as well. But everything that you do on credit affects your score to some extent, not necessarily uh, uh, a large impact and the impact do not sustain over a longer period of time. Just uh, opening up an account may have a lesser period of time, whereas making a late payment, you will have a longer period of time um, impact of your score. Larry, I have another question. Um, this one is, I consistently pay off my credit card on time monthly. Is it true that if I request a higher spending limit for my credit card that my credit score will improve even more? Yeah, requesting a higher limit or a large because that will extend your availability. And so, yes, you're, if you're using your credit and you have a, a larger availability, then over time that will positively impact your score. Um, that was, uh, what was the first portion of the question? 
that they consistently pay off the credit card, but you know, if they ask for a higher credit limit, would that improve the score even more? Been... I'll give you an example of paying off the credit card. Paying off the credit card, both positive and negative, of course, but uh, can have less of a positive effect by paying it off prior to the due date, the total balance. And so uh, remember when I said it, that you have to use it to get the benefit of the credit. So if you have a card and um, you go out and you purchase gas for $30 and then you pay it off before the due date, then there's a, you never had an opportunity for them to say that you paid the bill on time because that was maybe a never, never established uh, 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 the, because you have, you're not sh demonstrating that you can consistently pay it on time. Yes, you would get one, say, um, uh, um, a benefit by paying it because you had a bill, you paid it. However, if there was a balance that extended over a 60-day period of time, then they give you opportunity to get reported to the credit reporting agency multiple times that you're actually being consistent paying the bill on time. So, one instance would be if you're trying to maintain credit, you're just trying to maintain your credit and keep it in good standing, then it is it could be a good practice. It would be a good practice is to pay the bills off. Use your card, pay it off. Use the card, pay it off. Use the card, pay it off. That will maintain your credit. However, if you're trying to build your credit and drive your score up, then you actually need to have a balance on the credit. No more than 30% usage shows good and wise uses of credit and consistently make the payment on time over a period of time, 60 to 90 days, this will drive your score up to a higher score. That's what you do to build credit. Maintain credit, pay it off before it's due. Build credit, consistently pay it on time before the due date over, over a period of time. Great. Um, another question, if I close a bank that I have an unsecured credit card with, would it affect my credit? Would it be reported? Yes. Uh, when you close an account, it would show that the account is closed. There is no immediate effect just because you closed the account. However, the calculations that are being calculated when a credit score is demanded, it will, it will show that there is less availability. And so when you have less availability, then that percentage of um, available credit, the usage, is going to show a higher uh, usage. And so by having a higher usage on less amount, then it would negatively impact the score. Um, mind you also on this credit score, a credit score is not something that just hovers out there and stays. A credit score is only generated when it's requested. And so someone may say, I know my credit score. Well, what it is, you knew your credit score, uh, you have a recording of the credit score when you requested it. But after you requested it, there's been time that has elapsed. There could be other reports that have been added, positive or negatively, to that report. And the score has been regenerated to diff differently. It may be the same number, but it's been generated differently when you go back and request it again. And so credit scores do not exist until you request it and that score is generated and given to you at that point in time. So it's a snapshot in time, not something that stays. Great. All right, I think we just have like three or four more questions. We'll try to get through those and wrap up. So um, next question is, can I use the credit boost on an old account? Yes, and so um, if the account is, uh, when you say old account, if the account is on your bank account, and so it'd have to be a, a standing account that shows on your active um, uh, bank statement now. So uh, if, it, if it's already closed and you're not making state, uh, payments on it, it would not show up on your bank statement. So therefore, it, it cannot be used. But if it's so it doesn't need to be current. Correct. Great. OK. And then what things should you avoid spending too much credit on when out shopping? Are there specific things you shouldn't? use too much credit on specific pur purchases, maybe. Yes, uh, cr credit. And so 
if if you're again you should have a goal so it should be a plan why are you using credit if you're using it just to maintain credit are you using credit just uh to build credit are you using credit to uh to make a major purchase and so make sure you have a plan and using your credit just out shopping it, it's not a good idea to use credit to go shopping a recommendation is save to have a savings and so you have an amount in your budget or your spending plan for clothing you have an amount for entertainment you have an amount for gifts and holidays so that you've already saved for that and so when you go out shopping you have may have a credit card or a debit card that you use for convenience and so that credit card you can use it for convenience and you also can use it to maintain and build credit and so we use the credit card to make the payment of that particular uh, item that you're shopping for some entertainment which is clothing is uh, a necess necessity but some people buy clothing for entertainment and so you use the credit card to pay that off and if you're and if you're in the mode to actually bill your credit you have the money into the savings then you make monthly installments to pay that debt off six to nine days. If you're maintaining your credit, you use the credit card to make the purchase because of the convenience of the card. When you get home, you take the money from your savings account and pay that credit card off. And so credit cards are there for convenience, but the purpose of extending credit should be a goal while am I using it. And so do not use credit for shopping. Great. Um, if I open and close saving accounts, will that affect my credit? Just savings accounts? No, opening and closing a savings account do not affect your credit. Okay, however, great. Yeah, however, go by ahead. opening up a savings account, it can help build your credit because right. first, first you should learn to save. Uh, then you can start, but some people say save and reduce debt. You need to learn how to save. That's one of the first things to do and, and save to reduce your debt. And so the savings uh, is very important and I recommend opening the savings and not necessarily closing it. Great. And this is our final question. I think it's a great one to end with. Um, what is the best way to contact First Home Alliance to talk more about applying for a mortgage loan? Okay, and that leads to the last slide we have. <laughs> this is our contact information here. Uh, you can call, uh, it's 703-580-8838. We also have a toll-free number. Um, this is, uh, we are, of course, so we're, everything is virtual at this time. I would highly recommend that you send an email to help at firsthomealliance.org. That will get better and accurate response and we also have a paper trail. Uh, with that email, we'll be able to answer most of your questions you may have. And also, to receive services that we provide, uh, there, is a, there is a link, it's down at the bottom of my, uh, when, you go to that web, when you go to our website, you would go to the services tab, and then there's an intake, there's a link for intake form. There's an intake form, I think it's two pages, you answer some questions, that information will be submitted back to us, then we will contact you with uh, additional paperwork to need it and also set you up an appointment for orientation and a one-on-one. So again, you can give us an email and we'll send information to you or just easily visit our website, go to services and then intake, and then we will get in contact with you with additional paperwork and uh, an appointment. Thank you, Larry. Um, I know I got a couple last minute questions. They're pretty specific. So I'm going to ask if we did not get to your question that you take Larry up on his suggestion to use the help at firsthomealliance.org email address. He will get back to you with your specific concerns. Also recommend that you visit the um, Housing Expo website that I think you've probably been there and you can sign up for a free financial counseling session. So that's great too. And there's a lot of other resources there. I want to say thank you to Larry Laws for sharing your amazing expertise with us. He did a great job with the presentation ABCs of credit. And um, we hope to see all of you on another uh, workshop and session. And please visit the exhibit hall. And um, thanks for a great day. Good luck to you all. Thank you, Jill. Bye-bye.